Hey all viewers and viewers, my name is General Red Strategist, welcome back to So You're Being Hunted, this is episode 302 now. We're back, of course, with this little landowner experiment, the second part now. So in the last episode, of course, I managed to work out how close you can get to the landowner without him noticing you. And the answer to that is you can get pretty damn close. You can get right up behind him. But of course, in order to do that, I actually had to get him stuck on some of the geometry on one of the barns, in essence. But, you know, that was actually quite an interesting experiment to do, because, as I said in the previous um, in the previous video, I've never really kind of experimented too much with the landowner's mechanics. You know, I've done various, um, you know, quote-unquote experiments before, most notably that one with the scarecrows that I did quite a while back. You remember that one? The one where I... It was the scarecrow flight experiment challenge, wasn't it? Or flight experiment, as we called it. Trying to get the uh, scarecrows to, what, well, move up onto... High hills. Uh, there's the landowner over there, and there's a tower over here. And then shooting them off and seeing how far they could go. Shooting them off with a blunderbuss, that is. But yes. Okay, so the second part of this challenge is we have to see how close we can get to the landowner without him being able to kill us. So we have to get him to notice us. We have to get Senpai to notice where we are. Can we attract him from this range? I don't think he can hear the revolver from that range, can he? I have to get a little bit closer. I'm just thinking, can we lure him over to that tower? Okay, he definitely heard that. Right, that's good. Just keep uh, sounding every so often. Don't clip that, everybody. I know that sounding is something quite horrible. <laughs> or rather, quite lewd, actually, in fact. No. And now, this is not the... Mm, this is not the perfect tower to be using. I actually haven't said that. Maybe it is. I'm just going to keep shooting every so often, because... He's kind of disappeared. I can't actually see him now. Where is he? Is he still down there somewhere? Is he on his way? Is that him over there? Oh, I think I see him. He's over... Oh, bollocks. He's going the wrong direction. Okay. So, obviously, the second part of this challenge is, like I say, we just have to try and get him over here. We have to try and get him fairly close to where we are. And then just see if we can do our best. And, obviously, actually, what I could do is just actually attract his attention right here, right now. And just pull him over. Don't know why I'm wasting my time with revolver shots like that. <clears throat> okay. Oi, over here. Come on. Right, sin me. There we go. Right, so now that we've got him locked on, let's see what we can do here. Now, I know of all the different types of lone towers you can generate in the world, there are some ones where you can get right up to the top. And I know that if you're right on the top and the landowner sees where you are, he can't technically actually get you if you're right on the top. I'm pretty sure he does try and attack you, but he doesn't actually manage to kill you. But of course, this is a different kind of tower. This is one of the ones where you can't get right up to the top. So the question is, how's he going to do if I just go here? Is he going to be able to get me at this angle? I don't know. If he kills me on this map, then... Um, I don't know. Depending on the timing... We could always uh, try spawning in another one, see if we can get one of the other types of Lone Tower. I wonder. The problem is, he's going to kind of corner me here, that's the only thing. Well, then again, actually, it doesn't matter, does it? Because I can always just load from the last save, because obviously when I started this episode, I was at the jetty. Because that's where I saved between episodes. I did also stock up on a few items. Right, so let's see now. Okay, he can't hit me when I'm stood on there. Ooh, okay, he can... He can get me from that range. Ooh, okay. So the answer is, he has got a pretty wide radius on that thing. Right. I mean, we've only been recording for, what, about three or four minutes there? Okay, let's just load my last save. Just get ourselves back to where we were, just to see if there's one of the uh, towers that you can actually get right to the top of. Because I did spawn, well, I think when I was generating the islands for this map, I did set the Lone Towers to spawn, well, to their max, basically, so we should have plenty of them. I mean, there were two in that area where I was, the one I was in, and there was one slightly behind it, but not one of the ones that you can actually get towards the top of. So unless there's any others, I don't know, how many do you typically get per island if you max out the probability of Lone Towers generating? I don't actually know. I'm sure there are people out there who, back in the day, worked out all of these probabilities. And if they were around, they could probably give me a fantastic answer. Actually, General, what you'll find is that 
you can spawn large towers with a probability of 88%. And all that. That's my slight nerd voice, everybody. I could do an even nerdier voice, like the, you know, what's, what's it called? Um, Hifumi, out of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. You remember that series? Hmm. If you haven't watched that series, go check it out. Because the beauty of it is, it's Danganronpa. So, of course, there's lots of interesting characters in it. And, obviously, because it's a visual novel, I do a bit of voice acting. <laughs> voice acting of my own. Terrible voices and all that. Hifumi, of course, is your stereotypical nerd. And the voice I gave him had kind of a lisp. So, yes. Not very politically correct, but uh, probably entertaining as all hell. Right. Um, usually with a lone tower... Oh! That's a big one, but that's not, that's not one you can get to the top of that. Yeah, I was just going to say, usually with the Lone Towers, you can see them from a fair distance, because the silhouette sort of draws in. But, we don't really see many, do we, in this area. I do have a map. I should be consulting this a bit more often. Um, what do the Lone Towers actually look like when they appear on the map? That's the question. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to just circle back around to that one over there. To see what it looks like on the map, because maybe that'll help me identify other ones. He is actually quite close. I can just sort of hearing, hear, it, hear him, even, sort of humming in the background. What's he doing? He's being a bit of a bitch about it. Okay, so, so far the experiment has told us that. You, you know, he does have a fair radius on his attack, but... Uh, that's the problem. So, basically, with this kind of tower, if you're stood on that little outcropping there, he can't get you. But if you're stood anywhere even lower than that, he can get you. So that's pretty fucking... Um, I'm guessing that's fair, you know as relatively close as you can get to him. Let's see now. Maybe we'll just test it out actually on the ground. See, look, there's two towers here. There's this one and this one over here. What do they look like on the map? Okay, they don't really actually show up, do they, on there? That's an issue. If there's more of them, they're kind of invisible. Alright. I kind of want to see just how close it was on the ground. Oi, I'm over here, bud. Right, what's his hearing like? Can I sprint up right behind him? Because obviously the hunters have fairly decent hearing. Ooh. You see, this is normally the moment at which a hunter would... Oh! Oh, hello! How you doing? Yeah! Okay! Okay, right. Yeah, the problem with trying to get away from the landowner is it's basically impossible. Once he gets you on the ground, he gets you with another one, and that kills you, pretty much. Alright, let's just load the save again. Hmm, interesting. Behind him. Behind him, just by walking. Obviously, if I crouched, he wouldn't have been able to hear me, but then again, crouch, crouching and crawling is pretty slow. So he probably would have started to put distance between myself and him. So, yes. Oh, gosh, give me a gas. Go on my throat for me tea, as usual. Oh, dear Lou. Right. So, that's the answer to that. You, you can maybe get fairly close, but it's hard, because obviously that thing has quite the radius on it, and you can't sort of back out of its way in time to stop it from hitting you, I don't think. At least that's what I think. I don't know. But yes. So, there's that aspect. I mean, we've pretty much done that aspect of the ch of the uh, experiment now, so, you know, from here on out, the rest of this episode is just filler, basically. But, uh, yes. What's that? Oak Bunma. I thought he said Oak Bummer for a second then. I was thinking, what the heck? What the bloody hell was that all about? Okay, I really want to see if I can find one of those towers that you can actually get right to the top of. Because I really just want to experiment with that one. I want to see if I can find one of them and then just conclude as king of the castle on top of my tower with the landowner below just frustrated and unable to get me. So let's um, go over to this island over here. We'll just spend another sort of, you know, however long, ten minutes or whatever, just fucking around. If we, find, if we find the sort of tower that I'm thinking of, then all well and good. If not, then we don't. Bad luck and all that. Yes, so you guys out there, hope you're all doing fairly well, and that you're enjoying this little experiment. Of course, this will probably be the last video I do on this particular challenge slash experiment, and then I'll probably move on 
to another one. So like, as you know, if we can actually talk. So as I kind of always say, you know, if you have challenge suggestions, keep them incoming and all that. Oh, hello. There's a tower right there. Is that one that we can climb? I'm not sure. So I feel like the ones you can climb are usually the sort of slim towers. And they're not terribly high. At least they're not as high as that. I think that's not one that we can know. Look, the front of it's open. That is not the one we want. That's just the same as the one which we were in before on the previous island. Okay, never mind. Um, I said that there could be others around, others knocking around and all that. So if you see any friggin' um, silhouettes in the distance, ladies and gents, yeah, see, look, that tower does not show up on the map. Because that's that mill right there, that big square, isn't it? That's... oh, is it... Mm, wait, which one is it? Are we facing towards it right now? Hold on. No. That's that square over there. So hang on, what is the fucking... Oh, is it the farmstead over there? Yes. It's funny how the music always um, temporarily stops whenever you go into the map. Very peculiar, isn't it? Not sure why that is. It just does. Kind of always noticed that. It's funny because the music stops, but I think the actual game is still kind of going in real time. So if there were hunters and things around and they came across me while I was in that mode, they would be able to shoot me. I'm just going to stock up on some items from this here factory. Because I can. Oh, look at all these toy trains. What is this, freaking train, toy train factory? Hmm, we got lots of blunderbuss ammo as well, it seems. I said it before, I'll say it again. The old, um... The old factories always feel like the place where maybe human survivors try to uh, congregate so as to avoid being absolutely blitzed by the robots when they eventually turned up. You know, maybe one day I need to do a, um... A sort of experiment, just gathering as many books and letters as I can possibly find. And that's a thing that's probably been suggested to me by many viewers. You know, how many books and letters and things can you find that just help you piece together the, uh, the kind of backstory of the Sir world? You know, not that anyone's really probably interested in that anymore, because of course everyone's played Sir to death. Everyone know, probably knows what the story is, but yeah, you never know. Maybe people will be interested. Oh, do you reckon this is one we can climb up, or is it a bit short? I mean, it's short, but... Normally it has a distinct entrance, the one that you can climb right to the top of. Or is this one that's not accessible at all? I don't know. This is a completely inaccessible one, it seems. Okay, never mind. Unless you can sort of climb up here, but I don't think you can, can you? Are there sort of... Oh god. Missing sort of texture there. <laughs> you know, I've never really looked up close on these. Okay, that is not a tower that we can access. Right. So if we had two on the central island and... We've got, what, two so far on this island? Whereabouts are we? We're down there. Okay. Um, look slowly to the right over here. Maybe if we go in this direction, there'll be another one in over here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see. Hmm. I remember once I did a uh, sniper challenge, didn't I? Quite a while back, where I made use of the Lone Towers. Got myself a rifle, and I'd, you know, I had to kill as many robots as possible in a short space of time, but, uh, very interesting. You know, these toy trains make me think of maybe another kind of challenge that I could do, where I have to collect toys for the children and all that, because I'm a lovely person. And again, I say that, but, uh, you know, I do have my assholeish tendencies. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people would disagree that I'm a lovely person, eh? They'd be all like, Red, what the fuck are you talking about? The fuck you talking about, you slag? Oh dear. That was a, that was a very sudden um, insult that I just uh, threw at myself. Take that fucking dynamite, you bitch. Did you hear that? Yeah, he did. Take another one, please. See, look at that. Two sticks of dynamite. Didn't take any... Well, he probably he may have taken damage from it, but I don't know. Because that's the problem. Still haven't established how his health works in this game. Whether he is literally just invincible, or whether it is the case that he technically does have health points that you can slowly whittle down. It's just that, realistically, there are nowhere near enough weapons that would normally spawn for you to be able to kill him. Even if you maxed out the village and biome structure generation settings and all that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 
Give me that marmalade. Come here. There we are. Lovely jar of marmalade. I have not eaten marmalade in fucking years, bitches. I can barely even remember what it tastes like. Maybe that's what I need to do. Pick up some marmalade sometime. Right, I've got a rammed up inventory except for one little space there. Okay, well, I think we've only got four minutes left of this, you know, of my sort of chosen amount of recording time for this episode, so, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to find a tower anytime soon. We'll tell you what, I mean, we've fulfilled the second objective of the experiment, so there's not really any reason, actually, for me to be stretching this episode out any longer. So, yes, in answer to Spicy on Charlie's little uh, challenge, the reality of the landowner is... If you're using the Lone Towers, you can get fairly close to him, but he does have quite a wide radius on his attack. And, you know, if he hits you with just one, probability is you're fucked then, because he'll hit you with another one, which will kill you. Because it does a lot of damage, as you saw, that does. And that's the thing. Once he, I think, once he basically does his attack, as soon as it hits the ground, doesn't matter how quickly you try and sprint away from it, I think it will hit you because of its wide radius. So there you go, then, everybody. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's, let's wrap up here, then. So, this is episode 302 of So You're Being Hunted with me, a general red strategist. Another little experiment there. Done. And we'll uh, head on to another challenge, of course, in the next episode. So, whatever that may be, we'll see. Obviously, as usual, you know, if you have suggestions, do keep them coming. I always uh, make a note of them, keep them on a Word document, and obviously just pick and choose which one I kind of fancy at any given time. So... If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. You know the deal by now, and all that. Facebook and Twitter links, of course, are down below, along with my Propagandist channel link. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can do. As I said, you know, make sure to like this video. That is not a choice, ladies and gentlemen. You have to like it. Otherwise, I'm going to tell a classroom full of small children that Santa Claus isn't real. Goodbye, everybody. Please tell me you... Oh, no! What's that in there? Oh, right. Oh, it's a dead hamster. <laughs> yeah, it is what I think it is. Oh, Hammy the hamster. You've not had a good time. I'm surprised that little, uh, little in, uh, glass, probably plexiglass tank of yours hasn't busted with all the water pressure. I mean, who would bring a uh, hamster down here? I don't know. Oh, Hammy. You didn't have a uh, good end, did you? No! Why are you out here? Why? Stop it. Stop it. Some of these jump scares, there's no way to kind of avoid them. And, you know, you just end up taking a natural penalty.